This is where it means the zombies mean. The next topic we're going to discuss on Boxing Bros is PED use in the sport of boxing. We all know Big Baby Miller tested positive again, and he's tested positive multiple times. Now we have people calling for a lifetime ban. So the question we want to ask is how prevalent is PED use in the sport of boxing? And we're going to talk about that and then discuss whether or not there should be a lifetime ban. Um, the first thing I'm going to do is share this video and this video is relevant because So there's uh, Wilder telling uh, Joe Big Baby Miller to stay away from the PED. So you can see this video was uploaded in 2017. All right, moving on to the next. This is tape number one. Of the right. Share this joint. We do take that position of Shane Mosley. Taken by Judge Bristy in the matter Mosley versus Conti. This deposition is being held at 1790 Broadway, New York, New York, on October 27, 2009, at approximately 9.53 a.m. Well, the injection was EPO, right? It was EPO, yes. And you know it was EPO that day, correct? Um... Uh, yeah, I guess I'm as new as something. Yeah. Wait, did you here today? Did you? Let me just finish the question. As we sit here today, prior to going to the grand jury, December of 2003, did you know you were taking EPO? Yes or no? Yes. So basically, this is just a video of Shane Mosley admitting that he knowingly took EPO, a banned substance, to gain an advantage in his fights. And so, uh, just get right here. Uh, Look at my face. Let's go, champ. This is my type of action. You going, May 10th? 100. A lot's been going on in boxing. Um, Gerald Miller. Three failed tests, yeah. multiple substances. He'll be right back. That's nothing. Let's go, Jack. <laughs> He'll be right back. What's your opinion on it, though? Uh, you know, it happens. You know, we were, unfortunately, you know, things happen. And, you know, it's happened. And all we can do now is just clean up and go right back. Just like me. Let's go, Jack. Okay. It can't be stopped. It can't be stopped. Look at him. Have you spoken? <laughs> just not sure. Oh, shit. Oh, man. It's nothing. <laughs> All right, and so I'm gonna share this uh, article. And basically, this is an article that deals with PD use in the sport of boxing. All right, so this is acting up. But in this article, basically it talks about how Roy Jones tested positive after his fight with uh, Richard Hall for a banned substance. And what he did after he tested positive was he said it was um, something that he was taking legally, at least he thought he, he had purchased it from over the counter. Um, I believe it's it's called uh, Androstein. And um, that's what um, Mark McGuire and Sammy Sosa was taking when they were hitting all those home runs. And uh, what Androstain does is it increases the production of testosterone, energy, and ability to recover. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, this article is providing difficulty uh, being able to move it when I share it on the screen. So I'm just going to X that article out. But 
Roy Jones, in that article, it talks about how Roy Jones tested positive uh, for a banned substance. And here, this article that we're sharing on the screen, it talks about how Evander Holyfield basically had um, HGH sent to uh, his home. And, and the HGH was sent in a name that was similar to uh, Evander Holyfield's name, but it was something different. And, and basically it goes into speculation that Evander Holyfield was uh, using PDs. That's that's is it speculatory as of right now? Like, come on, bro. Look at him. He looked like <laughs> Miss Olympia. <laughs> you know what I mean? I think he was on the juice of juices. And here is um an article which basically talks about how Klitschko claimed he took it unknowingly prescribed medication to help him recover for a leg injury sustained during a kickboxing bout. And this is talking about how um by Tally Klitschko missed the 1996 Olympics after testing positive for a banned substance. And um, basically what he said was he, it was given to him and he took it unknowingly. We have um, a number of articles that we can show you, but for the sake of time, I'll just go over them. You saw Shane Mosley, Roy Jones testing positive, Evander Holyfield having um, the substances sent to uh, his home. Vitaly Klitschko being thrown off the Olympic team. You know about Tyson Fury being suspended um, 2015, testing positive for a banned substance. Um, it was called uh, Nidrolone, I believe. Uh, I don't know the correct pronunciation for this. Again, I don't pretend to be in the medical field, but he tested positive for it, and he blamed it on eating um, uncastrated wild boar meat. Um, and the substance that he took allows fighters to train harder, it reduces tiredness, and it helps uh, build muscle. Then you have Dillian White, who tested positive for being substance, and he said it was uh, Jack 3D, which was a new pre-workout at the time. And a lot of people were experiencing difficulty with Jack 3D. Um, and we pointed out in our other video how G had an experience with Jack 3D. Oh, you man. And how some people were dying from using jack 3d because it prevented them from knowing when their body was extremely fatigued and couldn't and they and they were still continuing to work out other fighters who tested positive for being substance were fernando vargas uh after his fight with oscar de la hoya james tony after he won the the heavyweight title from john ruiz he tested positive for a banned substance uh louise ortiz alexander provekin janet cannon briggs as you saw in the video and Andre Berto tested positive for a banned substance as well. With all that being laid on the table, Trill Dollar Bill, how prevalent is PED use in the sport of boxing? And when you consider um, how PEDs have been used in the sport of boxing, do you still say lifetime ban for Gerald Big Baby Miller? Yes. What's this? What's, what's We'll, we'll, we'll start cleaning it up now. <laughs> um, listen, if we start keep doing things that like we, we used to do, we're going to keep on getting the same results. All right. Um, let's start now. I mean, maybe not a lifetime ban, but there's going to have to be some stiff, stiff uh, testing. It's going to have to be all right, let me just say this. It's sad. This is sad, you know, and seeing seeing uh, some of the fighters that I had a lot of respect for on this list, um, it hurts because you want to believe that these guys are honorable guys and that they, these people have done lost their life in the ring, in this sport of boxing. Um, there's no place for that. I, I'm, there's no place for that, especially when you're agreeing to be fear. It kind of, it kind of, kind of really pisses me off. It kind of, it really, and I'm, I'm trying to choose my words for the sake of the, the children watching at home. <laughs> But um, this is some some BS. 
this is BS, and these guys should just hearing from all the the, the people that it is it, it, it's just shocking. And, and this, and I, I said this once, it felt like everybody was doing it at one point. It felt like everybody was doing it. Um, it just sucks, yo. It really sucks. Because, say, it sucks for the person that's not doing it. Because he's putting his, his life on the line and he's getting damaged. Boxing is, you don't play boxing. Like, you, when you retire from boxing, a lot of times uh, boxing retires fighters. You're not able to talk well, use uh, your hands and other faculties. You, so you might even lose your life with boxing. I'm just, I'm just, just disgusted right now. And I'm thinking, like, I wish all these other people that we look up to, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's been tested and has failed. I'm not saying the ones who made a mistake and they learned from their mistake. I'm talking about the ones who continue to do it. The ones who continue to do it, those are the ones that need to be banned. I'm like, if it happens one time, maybe you don't know, maybe you're trying to say something, but fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. And I don't know. I just believe after hearing all this, I believe it definitely needs to be a ban because we, we, let's protect the people who's not cheating. Let's protect the people who's not cheating. I don't know. I want to say a whole lot of other stuff, but I don't think I would be able to control my emotions. Well, uh, that's very mature of you, Trill. All right. Thank uh, you. Appreciate <laughs> it. <laughs> <laughs> what you got to say? Oh, me and then. You, G. Oh, okay. All right. So um, I, I differ slightly from Trill's response. I'll say if you got caught with a listed substance for let's say the second or third time, I'm willing to entertain a life ban. Now, however, this is the, this is where I feel like I might come up with another conspiracy for uh, Big Pharma Miller, right? Unintentionally, but this goes out actually to the entire sport, maybe even to all of professional uh, athletics. So I'm about to read an article from uh, the businessinsider.com and it's about designer steroids, right? And so it kind of goes into the argument of a lot of these guys are taking substances that may not be illegal right now, but may be illegal later, later on, right? And so I think that's how a lot of these uh, boxers are getting busted. So just give me a second. And the article is, uh, they're pretty much um, quoting a uh, scientist who has like a bunch of, uh, you know, journals. I can't say his name, but it's Ray, K-A-Z-L-A-U-S-K-A-S. And this is- on his, That's my guess, but go ahead. <laughs> uh, but uh, you can see, like, he has a bunch of his journals actually on uh, Springer, S-P-R-I-N-G-E-R.com. And you can look it up. It's called Designer Steroids, right? But they quote them in this article and it says, quote, these steroids are manufactured to closely resemble existing known compounds, but with sufficient chemical diversity to ensure that their detection by the WADA accredited laboratories is more difficult, end quote. And I'll finish the rest of the paragraph. As you may have already surmised, there are known illegal substances and unknown illegal substances. These designer steroids that are of use uh, excuse me, that are of unknown composition are difficult to detect because the tests administered to athletes are designed to look for specific markers only. The world of anti-doping testing is constantly having to evolve their methodology and understanding of performance enhancing drugs in order to keep up with the evolution of science. And just as there are illegal performance enhancing drugs, there are legal performance enhancing drugs as well. And so the reason why I share this is because when, and I apologize everyone, I couldn't make that video uh, uh, with Gerald, uh, you know, with um, Big Baby's uh, video in response, trying to defend himself. 
I actually do agree with what he was saying. I well, I could I could believe what he's saying, that he had probably a company he was paying good money to make sure that all his products were clean, right? Now, I don't know how credible that 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 lab that he was using, but let's just say he thought the substances that he was using for training were not on the banned list, right? But come to find out, maybe one or two were, right? That I think that's more common in boxing than we know. That's why we hear these outlandish excuses. Oh, well, it was my heart medicine. Oh, it was my asthma um, inhaler. Oh, it was the boar meat. It was the shepherd's pie. It was the taco. You know what I mean? Like, we're hearing all kind of stuff because I think maybe these fighters really think, like, you know what? I could take this and not get in trouble for it because it's not on the banned list. And I feel like a lot of them, especially like a Canelo or any other top-notch fighter that has the money, right? They, they, got, they got scientists on payroll, right? They could test everything. They could be like, yo, listen, boom, test this, blah, blah, blah. And they're probably his scientist or his nutritionist or whoever is telling them, yeah, yo, you could eat this, bro. Or you could consume this. You could pop these pills. You could take this uh, performance enhancement drink or whatever. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, they're, they're, they're taking all of this stuff because they're thinking they're good because their team is telling them, yo, we ran it past, you know, all these anti-doping um, – uh, companies and, and, and uh, administrative uh, uh, branches, and they're saying, yo, these are clean. So you're like, all right, cool. And, and bringing it back to, uh, like, for example, Dillian White with the Jack 3D thing, right? When he was taking it, he probably thinking nothing of it. It's just a pre-workout. That's what he's thinking in his mind. Then come to find out, maybe a couple months later, Jack 3D is now on the band list. It's already in his system, you know? So now, is he taking it knowing that now it's on the band um, list? I don't know. I, I wasn't there. I don't, I don't really know Dillian like that. But I could. All right, hold on. Let me, let me, let me add to that, G. Or uh, did he buy three, three, three tubes of Jack 3D and it got banned? And he's like, hey, no, I got to take my, my last two tubes. You know? <laughs> I'm going to say with this one last thing, right? And I believe I said this before, but maybe I didn't. I still remember. Kaden and myself, we were in undergrad. We went to the mall one time. It was GNC. I don't know if they got malls anymore. But I remember Kaden was like, yo, I'm a sh I, I promise you they sell steroids here. I was like, bro, they don't sell no damn steroids, right? We go to the front counter. Some yoked up dude, like, yo. You know what I'm saying? Like, this dude look like Miss Olympia. Like, you know what I mean? Like, man, listen. Miss Olympia came to the front. He was like, how you got and I remember Caden said something like, yo, show us the stuff that's about to get banned soon. He said, he looked around. Hold on one second. <laughs> he went to go grab keys. And I'm like, what the, what's going on here? Yo, behind the, the, the counter, he had like a, um, what's some things like, a, you know, where they got like stuff, but they, it's locked up. He opens it up. He's like, all right. He pulls out a handful of stuff. This right here is probably going to get banned in six months. This right here is da 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 It helps you with da-da-da. This is going to get banned by next year. This right here, I'm pretty sure it's already banned, but we got a whole bunch of it in the back, so we're just selling it. I'm like, what? The whole time. Caden's just looking at me like, hmm, told you. And then this guy says something. I don't know if you remember this, Caden. He was like, he said, I'm, I'm paraphrasing, but he said something about if you're dedicated, this is what you need. And I was like, dedicated. So that, turned, that, turned, that turned into us saying, like, whenever we saw someone you know, who – Anytime you see somebody, music, like, looking like they're on juice. He's dedicated. <laughs> you know I mean? like, at GNC. So because of that experience that I've witnessed, right, like, oh, GNC actually does sell, you know, banned substances, right, or soon-to-be banned substances, then I have to believe – a lot of these boxers, if they're taking it, they're taking it unwilling, the unknown to them that this is actually illegal, right? And I honestly believe all fighters are taking some form of a, a performance enhancement drug, whether knowingly or unknowingly. Because when you look at it, a pre-workout could be defined as a, a PED, you know? It's just like, what is it, like probably one chemical? I said that it is a PED. Anything that enhances your performance well, is, is a PED. So it's like, to me, I have to believe PED. all of them. Yes. I have to believe all of them on anything. If, it's, if, if the definition is that 
wide. You know what I mean? It's like then Look, every athlete is probably on. You gotta the add the illegal. I, 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 I gotta I, add like the band or legal. Yeah, to, that's what it is. So now are they yeah, all illegal? That. So that's why I'm like, if you're taking no, if you're knowingly taking an illegal substance, right? Knowingly, I mean, like you are aware this is banned. This is on the list. Mm. Father's not having it. UCAS not having it. Whatever. Um. Uh, anti-drugging administration saying you cannot take this, and you go, well, I'm going to take it anyways. Yeah, man, you should be banned. For hey, life, I'm, I'm not too sure. You, you, you got the be. floor for a second, but Trill looks like he want to add something, so let me Yeah, that. I was like, nah. I was rocking with you until you told me the story about you and Caden. That just goes <laughs> to show that they're more of a piece of sh than anything. <laughs> <laughs> because y'all don't got scientists. Y'all don't got none of that. And y'all find out from a guy behind the counter that these stuff is about to be banned and this stuff's about to be banned in the next year, I'm pretty sure that these guys with all these scientists and all these millions, they had somebody that was around them to be like, this is the one just to say the same thing to you guys where he said to them. And these, cause these guys is getting millions. And yeah, I think still, about that, true what you're saying, but you you're got, not illegal yet. That's what you I'm still, saying. You still got the floor for a second. Let me just break mm -hmm. something down. So there are a few things. So one, like, I told you before, like I was always in the gym, always worked out with people. And um, G can attest, we would see some guys who would be bigger and stronger than the people on our football team, but they didn't play any sports. And we already always knew like red flag, red flag. He's dedicated. But the FDA doesn't regulate um, the substances that are being sold at GNC. And it takes a while for them to catch up. So if a new product comes out, it's not regulated immediately. They still have to catch up to test it, and, and, and then it gets banned later. So they're always creating new things, and that's the stuff that uh, G was just read. But by, if you uh, know, this. like the guy behind the counter, but if you know, you know. Now, nah, but what they're saying is, but you don't know. All you know is this is going to help you get the, the, the winning edge. And you're you thinking about this is the winning illegal. edge. But, but, but Trill, as of right now, it's not illegal. So because it's not illegal, as of right Roy now. Jones, what Roy Jones tested positive for the, I think it's like Andro Stain. I, 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 I always can't. It, it was very popular when I was in high school. All the people were taking it. Everyone was putting on, I refuse to take it. Everyone was getting bigger, crazy. Like you saw Mark McGuire hitting home runs. Roy Jones said he took it. Uh, but when Roy Jones took it, it is possible it was, it was legal, just like the Jack 3D was legal at one point. Like, mm -hmm. you could literally just go and buy it. Everyone was going and buying it, and you could use it, but then it got banned. And so um, what G is saying is when it's legal, people are buying it and they're using it. But what Trill is saying is, and they know it's going to be illegal later because mm -hmm. the, they got scientists on their team. So that's where I'm just trying to – Connect the dots yeah. for the two of you. So, like, like, and then my final point is, yo, look at Snack, right? Look at that company, Homeboy. What's his name again? Um, uh, Victor Conti. Yeah, Victor Conti, right? He made a career <laughs> off of heating the system, right? Where fighters go, I'm gonna holler at him because he he knows the the chemical he got the uh, snacks, brother. He got the snacks. He know the equation to to get me that victory, right? So then now. You got this guy, he gets busted. Then he comes back and he makes a legit uh, 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 supplement company. And he signs a bunch of fighters. He has a facility and all of that stuff. He, yo, literally, I remember, what was it Devin Haney? Devin Haney, uh, I believe, was in the, um, the, the snack facility. Yo, it looked like I was watching Rocky IV, you know? Like, and they're doing all kind of, they're using all kind of uh, devices, uh, all, all kind of techniques. They coming up with different protein shakes, different um, pre-workouts, all of this stuff, man. Who knows? For all we know, the same stuff that Devin Haney's taking right now in a year or two could be banned. You know, it happens, true. And so I want to give Big Pharma Miller at least that benefit of the doubt. You can't, that, though, because, see, this is where – no, 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 no. I'm not saying no, no, I'm not saying not to ban him. What I'm saying is I do believe – Okay. Hold that up. he's saying, no. yo, I, no. I, I didn't will this is where you This is where you fall flat. The stuff he's uh, tested positive for have, has always been banned. 
Yeah, but all right, so, so let's say that. It was never once legal. <laughs> it was always illegal. No, no, I agree. All right, so it we're talking about to the be DVD injected. DVD. It wasn't like, it wasn't like, okay. It wasn't like, here is this powdery substance that you mix with a drink mm-hmm. and you drink it down. Yeah, he was getting started in his booty. It was. Uh, <laughs> yeah, well, I'm not going to repeat my, my, my theory from before, but I stand by my, my conspiracy from last time. I think it's just leftover residue that was already in the system, right? And that's why, to me, I'm like, because, like, think about it. Well, there are fools in this world, but I would like to believe Big Pharma is not that foolish. So when he got on that interview, right, although I was like, damn, this is a prime example why you need a PR team, right? He got on there. He's like, yo, I mean, I tested everything. I don't know what happened. This and the third. I was like, he could be telling the truth. But then when the dude talked about his previous um, situations with, with drug use, that's when he got offended, and that made him look guilty. But prior to that, I was like, hmm. And then, because this whole thing about designer steroids, right, where dudes are literally creating new performance enhancement drugs to perform, and they're not even picked up yet, then I could believe, like, yo, maybe, maybe homeboy's telling the truth. That's what I'm saying. I'm not saying, like, He's guilty. He's not guilty. Look, I think he is guilty. He, but I'm just trying to Earl justify. Spence, you see Earl Spence? He's what he's saying. He needs to become a bouncer or a bodyguard. Right. Take right. the L out of the lover, brother. <laughs> Over. <laughs> I mean, hey, that's true. Look. <laughs> Yo, that's the... How you going to get fired on your day off? <laughs> mm. All right, Ned. <laughs> Let's go, beloved. And, and I think that doctor was trying to shine light. Well, there's been a when you look at um the well, first I'm gonna say this. I think the doctor was trying to shine light on like a under under like there's like a whole illegal op uh, it's not it hasn't been black market, yet, a black market. A black market where they're pr- pr- um producing these substances that can't be detected. And a couple of years ago in Miami, there was a a, a, a bus where a, a facility got busted and a bunch of athletes were tied to it. John Jones, when he had to give up his source, um, who, um, um, his provider of his uh, performance enhancement drugs. So I, I say it's very prevalent in athletic sports to, to this day, to, up to this point. And um, to this day. To this, hey, I didn't want to quote him, but <laughs> to this day, right? <laughs> it just shows you how how everybody's out here trying to get an uh, 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 advantage over their competition. I, I, I feel sorry for like I feel sorry for the those who actually try to keep it clean, try to do the right, go the right route, and you have all a lot of athletes who are who are not using illegal substances till they're made illegal, and it just. It's just a whole cycle, so it's it's actually disgusting when you look at it. And that this is a big baby, maybe in big baby situation. I think after he got um um caught and the fight didn't happen, I think he was he, he like you said he had two tubes of Jack 3D and he wanted to finish taking his cycle, and uh, his cycle probably did did just and didn't end in time for it to get out of his system. So I'm like, he got what are you trying to say, bro? <laughs> Yeah, it's like, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, okay, it's okay. We get it. Yeah, I feel you, man. I feel you, man. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> I'm with you. Stumbled over my words. You know. He's a cheater. Cheater. Yeah, there's a <laughs> bunch of cheaters day, up there. He's a cheater. The cheaters point. never prosper. Well, mm-hmm. if you get caught. And another thing, <laughs> <laughs> the cheaters that get caught never prosper. <laughs> Uh, if they're taking supplements like um, pills, capsules, or powdered drinks and things like that, and then they become banned or they're using these products, but if they're taking injections, then that's a whole nother level. Of, uh, uh, that's a whole nother issue in itself. Yeah, Big Baby Miller's a junkie. Yeah. Big Junkie Miller. Yeah. <laughs> that's what he is. That's his new name, Big Junkie Miller. Yeah, yeah. athletic junkies, man. There's a bunch of them out here. And this is this is probably gonna be more prevalent as we as we as the sports as as it gets revealed in sports nowadays, man. Because a lot of probably athletes, don't need it, but he think he need it. <laughs> yeah, because he, he definitely need it for homeboy. Oh, he, oh, that's just wild. He, he need, need it, it for him because if he doesn't take it, that punch output drops. Everything drops. So I think um there was an interview with um 
the woman who's a part of his promotional team was saying how he threw like the most punches for heavyweight, all types of stuff. Yeah. And so that's definitely not going to be the same if you remove the PDs. So like you look at like the EPO, for example, like EPO and blood doping. There's like um, Lance Armstrong and there was this uh, documentary. What was showing, it was like days in to the Tour de France, to Tour de France and like um, he's just riding, not gasping for air. Like, no strain on his body. And you look at all the other riders, and they are dying. <laughs> they are exhausted. And he's just chilling. Just. And the thing with uh, Lance Armstrong, that's crazy. He's been cheating since he was a kid. He like Because, like, if you watch uh, the most recent um, documentary about Lance Armstrong, which was um, on ESPN, he's admitted he's been trying to find ways to cheat since he was 15 years old. So he's been cheating since back in the day. But anyways, getting back to the sport of boxing and Big Baby Miller, there's always people looking for an advantage. It's been that way since G pointed out we were in uh, undergrad. And so, like, that, the funny thing was we were talking about it, like, the whole thing started because we were talking about, like, people who were working out natural like us and people who were cheating, and you get, like, a, a great mixture in that room, especially when you go to a university the size of ours. And we had people from different walks of life coming from everywhere. And we would all be in the same facility and you would see just certain things. And we were talking about it. And I said, look, they, you can go to GNC and get the next thing that's about to be banned. And so we actually went, we did the experiment. There were a lot of things on the market. Like there was this thing called the T-bomb. So, yup, exactly. Mm -hmm. T-bomb was something that would boost your testosterone levels. And a lot of dudes were taking the T-bomb and a lot of dudes were just getting like yoked up. And then the T-bomb got banned. So what did they do? They made T2. Then T2 got banned. Then they made T3. <laughs> and I don't even think they sell the T-bomb anymore. Just like they don't sell Jack 3D anymore. But if you're someone who started taking the T-bomb when they were selling it, Right. And it's it's we were an undergrad. So clearly there were a bunch of college athletes who walked in there and looked at the T-bomb. And here's the thing about the T-bomb. It wasn't like it was just some minor thing. It was the poster on the front of GNC T-bomb. You walk in GNC. There it is. A whole cart with T-bomb in the front. Like this is heavy promotion. Take this T-bomb. It's like whatever's about to be banned, they pushing it. That's the product they pushing. That's what, that's what they're trying to attract everyone to. Now, here's the thing. You have people who are being tested, who are competing, and then you just have regular people, like the guy in the gym that I was talking about, who's more yoked up than the football team, but he doesn't play sports. Mm -hmm. So he doesn't have to go through this vigorous testing. He doesn't have to go through that. So you, 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 this guy can take whatever he wants, and the football team can't. And so there goes the dilemma. This guy walks around looking like the most yoked guy in the school, but he's taking this, and these guys can't take that. So what you create is a scenario where people are going to – it's 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 enticing to want to be able to take the T-bomb because you know this guy takes the T-bomb, and so it, and you see the results he gets. Then you start to think, well, if I take the T-bomb, and it's not even an athletic advantage. It's just a beach, a beach uh, aesthetically pleasing look. But you, you want to be able to walk through the campus in the tank top. You just want a beach bod. Yeah, and look, <laughs> and look, and look yoked up. You just want to do that. And you, and you take the T-bomb. Right? Because they're selling that GNC. So you take the T-bomb, and then when you go to test for one of your games, you test positive for some banned substance. And they say, mm -hmm. well, you, you was intentionally trying to cheat. Now, I wanted to be yoked up on campus. I took the T-bomb. Excuse me, I, I took the T-bomb, right? And now I can't play. They sell it at GNC. Okay, let me add, straight up. Man, let me be yoked up undergrad. I'm walking around campus with a fishnet tank top on. You know what I'm saying? It's going down, right? You know what I mean? Like, I'm just saying. He said he got the nipples out. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> we, had, we, had those, and we had those guys. Yeah, so I'm you, telling you, always walking around with the, the gallon of water. 
man. It'd be like it'd be like twenty degrees outside. Don't lie. We also we also had those guys who weren't too fit, but they were they were walking around with the gallon of water, yeah. just trying to look like the part. But my point is, so you have a guy test positive for a banned substance like the T bomb before it was banned, went into GNC, knew that the guy in the gym that was yoked up was taking it, so he just decided to take it because he saw the guy in the gym getting results from it. He just wanted to get results so he can look good walking through, and then he finds out later, this was banned, you're taking this, and now it's like you, you got one positive test on your back. And his intention for taking it would have been he just wanted a beach bod. But then there's the people who are taking it for the purpose of performing better. They know what they're taking. They know what's going to happen. They know the advantages, and they still take it. Well, what, what do you do with that? Well, then you ask, what sport are you in? Cycling? You're not hitting anyone. You're just riding a bike. And, and, and Lance Armstrong wasn't the only one who was uh, blood doping and taking EPO. There were a bunch of people doing it, a bunch of people trying to get the performance enhancing. Uh, performance enhancement. What sport are you in? If you're in football, if you're in boxing, if you're in combat sports, you can really hurt someone. So then it becomes a matter of protecting other people. But if the other people are cheating too, then what? So I think for Big Baby Miller, there is the argument other people are cheating. There is the argument other people are using PEDs. You, there are other people in the sport, like Shannon and Cannon Briggs tested positive, uh, Tyson Fury, Dillian White. You got going history, James, Tony, Roy Jones. You got a number of people. Alexander Provecchio, Luis Ortiz. Um, the list goes on. But they tested positive, and then they didn't test positive again. Thank you. Thank you. This junkie, he can't keep his hands off the needle. But that's all I was saying. Also, my B. No, no problem. No, I feel you. I feel you. Not nice. hey. But also, you have to look at what they test positive for. If it's a substance that wasn't Jack 3D, I'd argue Dillian White never should have been banned for two years because he took something that was once legal and. Then they banned it. So he should have just been suspended until it cleared his system. Yeah. Because to me, that's a legitimate argument. No one's regulating these things that they're putting out in GNC over the counter. So if someone starts taking certain things and they test, but when you take something that can only be injected, then there's a problem. If you ever get a supplement from G GNC and they say you have to inject this, mm -hmm. Then you know what time it is. Like, yeah. what Canelo tested positive for something that could be in meat, something that, like, uh, Billy Joe Saunders nasal spray that's really in some nasal spray, then you can give them the benefit of the doubt. When you test positive for something that needs to be injected, come on, fool. You spent, that guy said, there's nothing you can tell me. Yo, Caden, this thing's going to make you bigger faster, stronger. You just got to shoot it in your ass. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even ask the question. Is it a steroid? <laughs> Come, on, Come on, big baby. You got to take the L on that. That's all I'm saying. Just take the L, man. You just got to take the L. That's it. This is what we need to do. If I was Gerald Washington, I would demand that my loss to Big Baby gets reversed. You know what I mean? And everybody else that took L's from this dude, they mm -hmm. should demand that they um that they're uh look at yeah. what he did to Thomas Adamac, bro. I can walk, I can walk with you on that one, G. I appreciate it, Trill. I can walk with you on that one. Man, look, look at Let the, my look, L go. You know? Thomas <laughs> Adamac came from cruiserweight to heavyweight, a small guy. Fighting a 300 pound man who was probably juicing, and he beat the brakes off Adamac in front of the uh, Polish crowd. <laughs> See what I'm saying? See what I'm saying? He ain't allowed to go to Chicago no more. <laughs> you know? Or Detroit. Um, <laughs> the Midwest got him on, uh, on uh, the lockdown. Oh, um, I'm going to say zone. this in terms of lifetime ban, and then I'm done. For me, a lifetime ban shouldn't be the way we look at anything. 
to just being someone for a lifetime. Um, I think you have to take everything. Every situation is isolated. Every situation has its own set of individual facts that you have to take into consideration. Now, uh, Gerald Big Baby Miller, you have to review the situation. You have to understand what was going on. And I'm not saying there's a legitimate reason for taking PEDs, but um, all I'm saying is he's not the only one. And you have scenarios where we just went over other fighters who have taken PEDs and still were able to fight. Once again, they did learn their lesson. But for him, there's a lot that and, – and for him, what's hurting him is he's not taking accountability. So if I'm the judge, I'm someone who I say don't give him a lifetime ban. I don't want him to have a lifetime ban. I want him to have an indefinite suspension, Right. But when I meet with him and he's blaming everyone but himself, I say suspension continues. Suspension continues until he comes in and I genuinely believe he's sorry, he's learned, and he's going to do things differently is when I would say uplift the, uh, you know, reinstate him. And Move test him. clean. Yes, well, that's a given. That, that goes without saying. Yeah. Like, <laughs> <laughs> but, but my point is, until I feel like he's learned a lesson, until I feel like he's going to go about it differently, every time I meet with him and he's he's playing the victim, still suspended. Still, it's like someone trying to get parole. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, the big big junkie Miller's going to be trying to get parole for a long time. <laughs> new Pookie, you know Pookie from New Jack City. That's who he is. I'm calling him Pookie Miller. For he now. got clean for a little bit, though. So I feel like you're disrespecting Pookie. Pookie got <laughs> clean. And he keep, look, he, he tried to get clean, but he kept calling him. Kept calling him. <laughs> kept calling him. You know what I'm saying? Pookie, what got, hey, listen, Pookie got clean. Pookie got a job. Pookie did his thing. <laughs> Pookie got a job with the drugs. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, Big Baby Miller about to get a job with Victor Conte and Snacks. <laughs> <laughs> you. Please like and subscribe. Check us out on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. And please check out our podcast on all major streaming services. Yo, Big Baby Miller's about to be a guinea pig. <laughs> <laughs>